Hi everybody, and welcome back to our 25th episode of 35th Scale Figures in Review. I'd like to thank everybody once again for taking a look at my videos. Okay, I'd like to thank all my subscribers, and I cracked the 250 uh, subscriber barrier just the other day, which is great. Okay, the more the merrier, as I've said before. And today in the state of Iowa, it's an awful snowy, cold day, so what better place to be than in your workshop working on some of your hobbies and some of your kits and some of your figures. Okay? Well, and then today, being the 25th episode, I thought I'd go ahead and do something a little bit different with you folks. I'm going to show you what we use for bases. And if you're doing anything with your, with your models or your figures, especially figures, okay, the presentation of your figure is is part of the of the scene and part of what you want to try to do to pr to show your work to the general public okay and what I've done is over the years <clears throat> I've tried different methods and I've used different materials to create some type of a base to put my figures on well thanks to Dave uh, Youngquist at lastcalvary.com he's also introduced me to some some pretty nice uh, wooden bases that if your figures get to that point that you think hey I want to be able to present this and kind of show this thing off he has a great line of bases out at his website or his hobby store lastcavalry.com so make sure you stop by and take a look at what he has for his bases alright so let's go ahead and get that ball rolling for our 25th episode of 135th scale figures in review and it's all about bases today okay I'm going to kind of show you the evolution of what I've gone through as far as as my my figure making my vignette uh, creating and using bases okay this is one of my very first uh, vignettes this is a a, a Jaguar base with uh, dragons uh, or DML's figures from uh, the Corsair and pocket and what I did was I just simply took the base from the from the uh, uh, drag wire kit and removed the figures from from it and substituted these two guys in these are my well, couple of my first but then i had to figure out what to put on a base so of course this one i went to a local hobby lobby and picked up what i thought might be a suitable base and at the time yeah it was probably a good idea but you can see there's some good detail to the base and it's done it's done okay for me uh, you know from my one of my earlier works but obviously you can tell that the base is overpowering Okay, it's pretty gaudy, it's pretty large, nice wood. I mean, the, the Hobby Lobbies uh, and the other art stores that you may go to, their, their wood is, is very outstanding. But to try to find the right one uh, was one of those things that just didn't work out well for me on this. But I needed a base to put it on, so that's what I started with, okay? So then I came up with the idea that let's go ahead and start trying to see what we can find for, for a better basis. So it wasn't such a, such a big emergency to grab one and put one out there. So that's when I go ahead and I started shopping around a little bit more. All right. And this once again comes from Hobby Lobby. These are a pack of four. And these are actually really super uh, as far as the size goes. They're super cheap. Okay. There was four of these uh, this size uh, for like $1.79. And then you could use your, your Hobby Lobby uh, one-time purchase coupon. And so they were dirt cheap. And there was four of them in here. And as you can tell, this is one of my newer works. I'm, I'm looking to see if I can find a suitable base. And obviously right there, he fits pretty decently on this base, okay? And then, but what you have to do with these, of course, is you have to go ahead and get it finished. And this is what it would look like if I just bought some stain, which I've done in the past uh, from, from stores. Uh, this is what it looks like when you get it finished. I'll, obviously, I would put a coat of varnish over the top of this. Okay, but this was just done uh, about 10 minutes ago. So you see the change from here to here. Okay, and once again, if you put a little bit of a shine to this, okay, it'll turn out to be pretty good, but this will all be covered up by your groundwork. Okay, so on the bottom of the course is done just to be finishing it up. But at least you have a base that is suitable for about the size of the, of the amount of figures that you want to have, or if you want to display one, two, or a vignette of three or more, that would be fine. But this is, these are the two choices that I kind of have. Okay, all right. Then I, uh, a while ago, uh, of course, and if you're like some of us average Joes, okay, we're kind of strange in the sense that we can find all different kinds of little items that we can wind up using uh, just around the home. Okay, these are simple peanut butter lids. Okay, and of course, my family we go through peanut butter like a hot knife through butter. 
all right so when I saw these I thought well you know what gee was that looks like the exact same size of a base I could possibly use to put some figures on okay so what I've done is I've taken a uh, one of these just like this and then I took plaster a pair is just from a general hardware store okay mix it with water okay and in there it's super cheap to be able to do because I like to have my bases have a little bit of weight to them okay and so then you come around and then I primed it with good old Tamiya fine primer okay and then you can do whatever you want to do to the top okay so this base started as a peanut butter jar and now it has it's primed to be this with a little bit of weight in the in the uh, plaster underneath okay and so and of course I've looked at different sizes of lids too that I could possibly use and here's another size lid that a two or three figure vignette could fit on okay and I would fill this up once again with plaster to add some weight to it so it have a nice suitable uh, uh, place to have it get sat down on okay this is what I did was I took from a big uh, container of uh, the plaster to a smaller usable container that would have it in here just mix it with water all right and like I say you can I actually filled up I think four or five of these bases to what they look like okay and so what winds up happening is and then this is one of my uh, first works okay from the from the jar all right you see on the bottom uh, it's it's got a, a brown uh, paint on it from Tamiya okay it's got the, the the bottom is filled with plaster to add a little bit of weight to it I put a gloss coat over the edge but then of course over the top I use cellular clay to fill in and this is one of my figures this is the Hornet uh, metal metal figure with one of his resins heads okay I found some ammunition boxes for a panther okay and so there is this guy Okay, and I consider that base fairly, fairly decent base to have uh, a, a figure on. Okay, and I've made it a little bit of a vignette because I just like to do that with my with my stuff. Now a little bit bigger one. Okay, and this is a larger lid, once again filled with a plaster. Okay, and here it has a 20 millimeter gun displayed on it. I took an old Verlinden uh, cobblestone street cut it to shape uh, used epoxy uh, to put it down to get it stuck painted it of course okay I I pinned down the 20 millimeter this is dragons 20 millimeter gun okay to it all right and as you do a little bit of a slow turn it's all it all it looks pretty good okay once again I filled the bottom with plaster okay so it has nice nice weight to it nice girth to it okay and it works out pretty good okay and then Lastly, for these figures, and this was just one I just did complete um, not too long ago. These are the great Rado figures. Okay, I'll, I'll do some close-up zooms. Okay, as a matter of fact, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit on this guy here too. Okay. All right, and same thing. And this is a peanut butter uh, jar lid filled with plaster okay underneath to give it some good sizable weight to it okay uh, I use some uh, some sea foam some insulation foam okay to, to make the ground a little bit risen up okay uh, I use Vallejo's uh, oh, mud uh, Russian thick mud for this and it's worked out pretty good this is a nice one the Rado figures are excellent okay these guys turned out to be really pretty nice Okay, uh, Redick Putin and uh, in Poland is the manufacturer of Rado figures, does a, a great job. Okay, and then what I thought I'd do, this is, of course, cellular clay. Okay, and we've been using cellular clay uh, forever. As far as modelers go, this uh, you, you mix with water, you can add a little bit of glue to it. Okay, it dries very well. In other words, this is already paper mache that's all ready to go instead of having to cut up your newspapers like we used to do when we were kids. Okay, so that's what you make your groundwork from. All right, here is an example of Vallejo's thick mud, okay, that I will use in, a, in the upcoming uh, vignette or figure display I want to be able to do. Okay, so this is, and these are excellent, 
all right i have russian thick mud this is european brown mud hey okay, whatever you like to do now after you've gone through and decided what kind of a base you are going to choose to do or whatever you got to get your measurements down okay and now i got this this i this came from dave youngquist and this is one of dave's uh wooden bases and these are excellent okay these guys have uh, padded underneath okay so they're great displays obviously you see one on one i i feel proud enough of this guy to go ahead and purchase a smaller base from Dave all right but uh, uh, put a nice plaque on the on the front explaining what he is okay did some groundwork with my Russian mud okay so he's supposed to be in the Ardan but it's dark dark enough mud as it is okay and then this one I just finished uh, earlier this year and this is welcome to Kharkov okay figures turned out pretty pretty nice for me so therefore I wanted to go ahead and display it on a little bit more pronounced base all right but then when you go shopping for your bases this is what Dave Youngquist suggested that I do okay you kind of figure out uh, what figures you want to put on there and then you get the measurements from the website and then you go ahead and you can cut out sizes that you might want to be able to use okay this is a one and three fourths which would be this base right here all right and so that's the surface you're working with so, for example, if I take my guy and put him on here, he's going to occupy a, a large portion of that brace, which is fine. If I don't want to do any more groundwork or anything like that with him, okay, I would go ahead and that would be fine. But I'm going to display a little bit more groundwork. So, I'm going to go ahead and keep this on file because this is the same size of base that it's right there. Okay, this is a 1 and 7 eighths by 1 and 7 eighths. This would be this one. It's a little bit bigger. Okay, so what I would do is I'd figure this guy right here, and it's going to have me a little bit more room to put some ground cover in, like a tree stump from uh, Bernardi, okay, maybe some rocks from the backyard, some, uh, some static grass, okay, would be able to cover this up, okay, and therefore then I know the size that I want to be able to order from Last Cavalry. All right, I went ahead and ordered these two, these two anyway, just because I was going to do a base, dis uh, a base uh, demo with you folks. All right, but this is what Dave suggested I do was just get the measurements from the website, cut pieces of paper up so that's your working surface, and then you can tinker around with what you want. And obviously, if that's not a big enough base, this is for one, but if I want a bigger base like this one right here, okay, to go ahead and put three on it, I would I clip the piece of paper out and mess around with my figures to figure out if that was the correct size. All right, that's a real simple way before you go ahead and order one. All right, but once again, like I say, when you go to lastcavalry.com, it has the measurements there so you can go ahead and do this. Okay, so these have all turned out to be pretty good. And that's kind of been my little walkthrough as far as like the different bases that you can create, how you want to go ahead and work your bases. Okay, what I do oftentimes, I'll take just blue painter's tape and I'll, I'll mask off the top so that way I have a good working area. Okay, if you're going to go ahead and anchor your guys into your bases like so, okay, you're going to need to be able to use your pen vise and drill a hole in that. I will say that using, using the hard plastic, it takes a lot of effort to get your holes drilled to be able to anchor your, your troops in. Okay, the, the wooden bases, okay, it's a lot easier, but these still are pretty solid. And then you can anchor it however you want to do it. Okay, so that's kind of it in a nutshell as far as like how you can create your own base what's available out there for you okay so until next time thanks for tuning in if you like what you see go ahead and subscribe please okay and i'll wait until next time so that's it for today's episode of 135th scale figures in review we'll see you folks later